Okay. Every morning we open the door and we shake hands to all the children. There are some uh, 200 uh, hands I shake, so uh, let's start. At the J.P. Kuhn School in Amsterdam, Principal Yanni Town believes that greeting each child individually is the best start to the school day. To an overseas visitor, there's something else unusual about this school. Although it's the local primary school, not one of the kids is ethnically Dutch. In Holland you call it a black school, we don't like the word so much, but um, they call it a black school, only a children from foreign uh, uh, countries. Ten years ago uh, we had uh, some uh, Dutch children, a group of Dutch children in the school, and uh, then they learned that's a Dutch. And now it's a real problem that uh, the, uh, the school there are only foreign children. In a multicultural city like Amsterdam, it's not surprising to find schools with a high percentage of non-Dutch children. But what is unique is the almost complete segregation of the entire school system along racial lines. Just 15 minutes drive away in the very centre of Amsterdam in a well-to-do suburb, Students rehearse in English as well as Dutch. Here, the Dutch clearly hold an ethnic majority. It's what they call around here a white school. Most of the schools in a city like Amsterdam tend to be either uh, predominantly black or predominantly white. Black meaning in the Dutch context, not necessarily skin color, but simply non-Dutch descent. So uh, a Turk, for instance, is, is seen as black in that context, although most Turks have a rather white skin color like you and me. Ruud Koppens is a sociologist whose views on Dutch multiculturalism have often got him into trouble. He accuses his countrymen of allowing an apartheid-style school system to emerge. If that is the actual practice in Dutch society, then it is very re reminiscent of, of apartheid in a way. And it's, it's this, whole, this whole system in the Netherlands of, of stimulating segregated institutions. Uh, if it is combined with social inequality, well then to some extent it becomes an apartheid system. Nou kijk, we hebben niet de apartheid die door de uh, overheid, door de regelgeving uh, geïnitieerd is. Uh, ik noem dat de onbedoelde apartheid. Zeki Aslan is a Turkish-born education activist. He agrees that Holland is becoming increasingly divided along racial lines. Ik beschouw het een echt een hele grote probleem voor Nederlandse samenleving de komende tien jaar. Voor de stad Amsterdam of Rotterdam zal misschien al te laat zijn. Ja, want ik zie daar een meneer lopen met een paraplu. An incredible influx of migrants over the last generation has skewed the population balance. Already 50% of school age kids in Amsterdam are from migrant backgrounds. The numbers have overwhelmed schools in poorer suburbs and the white parents have moved their kids to white schools. In Holland, they call it white flight. Goed leren kennen, dus, um, en juist de concentratie heeft ook uh, uh, nieuwe problemen uh, gecreëerd. Zoals bijvoorbeeld het ontstaan van uh, uh, zwart-witte scholen, waar op dit moment eigenlijk niemand in Nederland uh, raad weet hoe dat moet uh, aangepakt uh, worden. Within five years, more than half the residents of Holland's four biggest cities will be of foreign origin. 
Maldeport is just a few minutes drive from Amsterdam's centre, but here native Dutch people are few and far between. It's a melting pot of mainly Moroccan and Turkish immigrants who formed an almost exclusively ethnic community. In other words, a non-white ghetto. Zo, aan de ene kant is het wel leuk hè, om dit soort buurten terecht te komen, maar tevens ook uh, ontstaan allerlei nieuwe problemen. Um, vooral voor jonge kinderen die ook belang bij hebben om uh, aanraking te komen, bijvoorbeeld met het uh, Nederlandse taal of naar school gaan met uh, uh, autochtone leeftijdgenoten en voor... The sheer size of the migrant population has driven the segregation of the suburbs and the school system. The fear is that a divided society entrenches the disadvantage of migrants and fuels resentment from native Dutch that their culture is being swamped. It has become the hot issue in Dutch politics. You can't talk to, through these issues. If you look at the birth rate in the Netherlands, you see that people who are originally Dutch, they have an average 1.3 children. The Muslim society in this country has an average of five, six children, which means that there will be a shift in society. Eric Barlemans is the education spokesman for the Dutch Liberal Party, part of the ruling coalition in the Netherlands. He says the shift in society is so profound that the previous policy of multiculturalism must be questioned. My predecessors had the idea that a multicultural society would be to the benefit of all, and what we now can conclude, uh, it failed completely. <laughs> Despite adequate funding and all the facilities of the state system, children in black schools are slow to progress and many fail to achieve a satisfactory higher education. Dutch parents have moved their kids to white schools for their better academic results. But for those Dutch parents too poor to move, it's led to resentment about the impact of immigrants on the school environment. It irritates me too when I go to, to this school and when you have mothers who talk in their own language to each other. Actually, it irritates me because um, I think it's a bit impolite also because I can't talk with them, I can't hear what they say and... I would, I would like that they try to, uh, or even that they just uh, talk uh, Dutch. Doreen Fleervoet is a single mother in an ethnic neighbourhood. She can't afford to pay for a private education, so she's been forced to send her young daughter to the local black school. And she's worried about how this will affect her child's education. Uh, sometimes they say about those people, the, the Moroccan um, uh, families, that they leave their children out of the streets and they don't care and there's not much uh, education around. Uh, they are educated by grandmother or grandfather. and So that concerns me a bit then, yeah. Even the teachers at black schools say the children's poor academic performance is related to foreigners' willingness to learn Dutch. En uh, dat hebben we in Nederland ook heel erg gedaan. Dat enorme tegemoetreden van uh, de Nederlandse samenleving aan uh, de buitenlandse instroom. Van ja, je woont in een Nederlandse samenleving. Uh, dat betekent ook een inzet van jou naar die samenleving toe. Dat betekent onder andere dat je de taal gewoon goed onder de knie moet krijgen. En het kan eigenlijk niet meer zo zijn dat we straks nog mensen in Nederland hebben die 30 jaar in Nederland wonen en de taal niet spreken. In black schools, all the education, even the puppet shows, are in Dutch. Ah, dat vind ik ook dus Piet. 
Ga je even straks wakker maken? Ja, Sinterklaas, oh, ik zou ook zo graag even gaan slapen. Nee, 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 beste kerel. Jij gaat die zak uitpakken. In Multicultural Holland, it's surprising in this show from Dutch folklore to find a character called Black Pete, said to be a Moorish slave helper to St. Nicholas. Gaat even een tukkie doen. Tot straks, Piet. But Holland is changing. The migrant influx and the segregated schools are driving a policy change from the current governing right-wing coalition. It started with the parents who came here, who didn't want to accept the values of the Dutch society. And it continues when you send the second or third generation to school. If they don't want to accept our values, and find a way in our society, then it is actually the origin of future problems. Het is wel een leuke land. Mensen zijn vriendelijk, maar het is de laatste tijd niet zo niet zo goed. Er lopen verschillende meningen tegen elkaar. De ene wil zijn mening centraal houden, de andere wil zijn mening ook centraal houden. Amal is a Moroccan immigrant with two children in a black school. She says the debate about integration and accepting Dutch culture should be a two-way street. Je moet taal leren, je moet ons kunnen begrijpen. En ze praten vaak met ons. Dus je, moet ons uh, je moet de taal heel goed kunnen praten. Je moet onze cultuur ook begrijpen. Maar aan de andere kant vergeten ze dat ze ook onze cultuur moeten begrijpen. We kunnen niet samen, samen leven als je mij niet begrijpt. Het is niet voldoend als ik alleen maar jou begrijp en jij mij niet begrijpt. Dus we moeten elkaar begrijpen. En multicultureel betekent dat jij moet mij begrijpen, ik moet jou ook begrijpen. But the pleas for understanding from migrants are not finding political support. Instead, the political rhetoric is hardening. If you look back in the last 20, 25 years. We've tried to cover up all the problems we had with immigrants, all the problems we had in the educational system with youngsters uh, from uh, uh, another origin. And uh, that covering up uh, actually made uh, the situation worse. The deelbaarheid van alle leven, that is what in the verhalen van Koa's heel erg centraal staat. And what bedoelt he daar nou eigenlijk mee? At the exclusive Montessori White High School in Amsterdam, Students debate the finer points of Dutch literature. There's more than a thousand children at this school, but hardly any foreign born teenagers. This is where privileged white parents send their kids. It's certainly a liberal environment. The students are even allowed to smoke in the playground. But with special entrance exams and high fees, migrant kids have been left out of the equation. But here the traditional rhetoric of tolerance still prevails, even if the practice argues otherwise. Black and white schools, you don't like the term? No, absolutely not. Why not? Why not? Well, because nothing has to do with uh, uh, colour or for skin or, or eyes or whatever. Just uh, schools have to deal with education and they should uh, make a uh, good programme for the children. And each of the uh, this, uh, small schools have their own room where they can study. And uh, about 30 to 40 percent of the time the children uh, choose themselves for uh, which subject they are going to work at. Third Stoughton makes no apologies about the fact that his school is almost exclusively white. He sees it as just a matter of time before migrant kids start getting into the white schools. In five, ten years, none of these white schools are, uh, are white anymore. And that's the natural process, and I think that's the way it should be. Do you think by not having more black kids here that you might tend to be more racist in the future? No. No, that's not true. Why? Because, I don't know. 
I don't think bad about uh, black people or something. En Emma, dat zijn de groepjes. We beginnen met Grover. Anouk doet het licht. The kids at the Montessori school don't believe that their all-white environment makes them intolerant. But already the shift in public debate about multiculturalism has had its effect on attitudes towards migrants. It's getting really uh, full in here. There's not that much space for housing and uh, things like that. So they have to contribute to the society and uh, not be doing nothing and doing uh, nothing good to the to the Amsterdam or the sit the, the country. Yes. So they have to work hard to stay here. With migrant children now dominating some schools, their parents are pushing for official recognition of their culture and language. Turkish migrants have tried to have Turkish letters officially adopted into the Dutch alphabet, as well as the compulsory teaching of Turkish as a second language in Dutch schools. And if my first reaction was, uh, for me, that's out of the question. Absolutely out of the question. Um, the Dutch are famous for their knowledge of languages. Uh, the English language is one of them. And then we have uh, German and French uh, as an obligational language as well. If you want to learn the Turkish language, you do it at your home place. And the government ha doesn't have to facilitate it, nor has to pay for it. Activists like Zeki Arslan believe that de facto segregation must be stopped and schools forced to adopt a more even racial mix of students. You can stop stap in further gaan and that's in Nederland eerlijk gezegd langzamerhand wel een onderwerp van discussie of we niet kunnen werken met de quotering. En wat betekent dat? Dat bijvoorbeeld eh, witte school zorg draagt voor 30-40 percent eh, instroom van migrantenleerlingen. En dat de Zwarte School zorg draagt voor de evenwichtige samenstelling, namelijk 30-40% instroom van witte leerlingen. But the Dutch government is not interested in a quota system. In fact, there are no policies to end the segregation in Dutch schools. Instead, they've embarked on a tough, cruel to be kind approach to migrants. In February, the government introduced a plan to force around 25,000 failed asylum seekers back to their own countries. And for those migrants already in Holland, the only way to preserve social cohesion, according to Barlemans, is to force them to integrate into Dutch culture. The public agrees with me on the policy that we have to follow a tough line now. Tell the people what you think, give the arguments why you say it, and then strive for solutions. Because if you don't give solutions in the coming two, three years, whether it will be here in the Netherlands or in Australia, the problem will be ten times as big in five years' time. Others say that getting tough on immigrants will be counterproductive. Well, I think most immigrants want to integrate. They want to be active on the labor market. They want a good education for their children. So in that sense, I think sort of choosing words like being cruel or being tough are, uh, suggest uh, the wrong thing because they suggest that integration policies should somehow force immigrants to do things they wouldn't want to do. <laughs>